Hello from ITU headquarters in Geneva, where I'm very pleased to be joined by Eddie Motter, the CTO of Fixed Access at Huawei. And we are here at the uh, workshop on the future of TV for Europe, and we're here to talk about Huawei's relationship with TV. Eddie, thanks for joining us. Glad to be here. Thank you. What is Huawei's relationship to TV? It's the biggest driver for our network innovation. Um, TV, uh, alongside with data, of course, like internet, that's the biggest driver for network innovation, network capacity build, uh, network functionalities, new service tiers from the operator's kind of view, so that's the stuff that we focus on. So from our, side, from our point of view, um, uh, uh, TV is one of the major services that drives us along. They speak about 80% of internet traffic being video by 2020. Yes. It's the major application you have to serve. What is the innovation in the network required to serve that huge demand for video? That's a good question, thank you. Because uh, we, we see that, that the drivers for network innovation, they are migrating also. Normally, as an operator, as a fixed network operator, you would uh, focus and tend to focus a lot on capacity to serve your higher uh, service tier that you sell as an operator to your customers. But now, because of the new service like you know, VR, AR, um, mixed uh, reality, uh, uh, we see that uh, shifting along towards latency uh, and the high quality of networks, so high availability, and, all the, and again, latency, those are the, the drivers that, that push us forward to do network in, uh, in innovation, which actually ends up with a high standard of new type of networks. And what are the new types of networks that you're working on? Actually, um, for myself, I'm focusing on two. Uh, so it's fiber, but then fiber on uh, PON infrastructure and then with new technology inside PON, uh, which provide us with low latency networks uh, that make uh, VR, for instance, as a video service able. Uh, and on cable, we are also trying to do our, uh, our innovation. There is the latency, there is a, a big uh, um, a challenge because of uh, uh, the network topology by itself. But we are trying to solve that also, yeah. What are the, what are the services on the horizon that um, consumers in Europe and also globally could look forward to? Uh, what's next? VR, AR, very simple. Um, it is predicted, uh, and we had a nice chat about uh, predictions uh, earlier today, it is predicted that around 2025 there will be like 400 million people on the world that would be enjoying VR, AR or mixed reality. And those are the type of service that would, uh, would, pre, uh, uh, um, that would actually uh, provide the operators with a big upsell, not only based on capacity and subscriptions, but also on uh, new types of network uh, services, something like VR, AR with low latency services, which is needed actually. So those are the kinds of uh, uh, services as a network service. On top of that, from a business point of view, you can see that like using VR and AR, li it's like in a medical world, it will be applied, it will be uh, used for education, it will be used for tourism also. So that's uh, the, big, the big picture there. And what are the what are the new partnerships required to make these new services happen? There's a huge variety of services, and I imagine you know, it's much more dynamic business. Yeah, you can split that in two actually, because there is a, a divided business based upon network topology, network technology. Uh, so we are trying as why we are trying to set up as many partnerships as we as we can. Uh, for that, we just built in uh, 2017 already. We built a, uh, like a partnership in our headquarters in Shenzhen. Uh, to invite other partners on technology level to come over and have thoughts, uh, sharing thoughts with us about VR uh, applications, how to build business cases, how to build business and to build networks. Um, and there is another part, of course, it's a business dam uh, it, it itself because you would need partners to, uh, to actually make it able for customers to buy the service that they want fitting the need that they have by maybe using uh, VR, AR, and then based upon that, having the right choice for the service tier as well as the network choice. What has been your experience at this workshop? It's, uh, we have a number of voices represented, regulators, business, uh, a variety of people. What has been your experience of uh, our talks today? I had two experiences today, uh, which actually explained a lot more to me about market explorations, uh, market data analysis when it comes to OTT deployment. And there was another one that, that struck my attention also about deployment in Spain uh, with over the top services and IP services. And uh, I actually this struck my mind also, there was a part about uh, the DVBI, which also sounds very interesting to me. So that's, f that's the reason for me to come back. Yeah, definitely. Well, we hope to see you soon. And thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you.